tell you what, take a peek inside of your working folder, and if you would like to follow along, I hope you do, open up joinaverage.ai. Just got a couple of simple shapes in it that we're going to change. Again, the whole premise is simple shapes can be made into complex objects. Now, let me make a confession real quick to you. When I started out with Adobe Illustrator, and that was actually in 1987, that was a long time ago, I had been in the industry more or less in natural media. Well, I did oils, I did watercolors and stuff like that. That's what I did. Did it all my life. But I wanted to get more into the computer side. Hollywood in the U.S. was switching. A lot of things were happening. And so I pick up this new fledgling program called Aldis, not Adobe at that time, Aldis Illustrator. My first attempts were, well, let me just say they weren't successful. I could not figure out a pen tool. That's about the only thing we had back then is a pen tool. I tried and I tried. I got very frustrated, but I did find out two things. Number one, practice does make perfect. We've all heard that, but it's true. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. And the other thing was, is I understood eventually that I don't have to take the pen tool and draw the Mona Lisa. I can create simple shapes and assemble them into the Mona Lisa. Simple shapes can be made into complex objects. That is my goal in this entire title, is to push us toward that realization. Now, I've got a kind of like a split bean down there, a couple of lines. Let's start with the split bean. We're going to talk about joining and averaging, those two particular features. Now, if I zoom in down here, let me show you something. These are two separate items, drawn separately, and then I used my arrow tools and everything to kind of put them together at the bottom. So that anchor point right there is kind of on top of the anchor point over here. Actually, let me bring that down again for a second. The reason this V split is here is because the objects are indeed separate. They're open shapes, but that line right there represents where the fill went from that point to that point. Let me undo that again, and let's blow it back up. I want to weld those two parts together and make this shape one. Now to do that, understand you can only use two anchor points. Can't be three, can't be four, can't be one. It has to be two. Pick up my direct selection tool right there, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to marquee that area. Now I drew the shape, so I know where the anchor points kind of are. So it's no problem for me just to get those two, but make sure you only got two. Then I'm going to go up to the word object on the pull down menu and go down to path, join. Now, control J in Windows, command J on a Mac. Shortcut if you use it a lot, nice to know. Go ahead and click it, watch what happens. So actually, watch what happens to the fill area here and here and how they come together. Well, the shape is now, in a sense, one. Let me bring that down a little bit, and I'm using the zoom shortcuts, which are the control key, in Windows and the Command key and a Mac and the plus and minus keys. And you can see that the shape is now put together. Since it's together, the fill makes sense. We'll come together here. But we have one more area right up here. And again, let me make that a little bit bigger. It's still open right here. And I want to close that now. If I pick up my uh, direct selection tool and I go ahead and I marquee just these two, and I do a join. Watch what happens when I do a join on these two. Well, it creates a straight line, and that's okay. I mean, that's cool, but that's not what I want, so I'm going to undo that. Let me bring that down in size so we can watch the whole object. I want to average those two and take into account the curvature so it uses the curvature when it draws the line. That's average. So again, if you don't have them selected, Go ahead and select them again. And this time we'll go up to the word object and go down to path and average. And see that little ellipsis, the three dots? Anytime you see that, it's going to give you options. Now, this one, I wanted to average both the horizontal and the vertical. And watch what happens when I click OK. As a matter of fact, watch the whole shape here. It averaged them together, and it caused the curvature to change based on the original curvature of those anchor points. We averaged them. So if you join, nothing moves, a straight line appears. If you average, depending on what you're doing, basically it can average it and change the curvature. Now, let me go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Up here, I'll tell you what, pick up your direct selection tool and select these two guys right here. 
and do an object path join. And we could do the same thing over here. Object path join. So we have a, I guess that's a trapezoid, isn't it? Let's do an average over here. Let's pick up the top two and go up to the word object and go down to path average. But this time we're dealing with vertical lines. I don't want both. Both does something like this. Watch what happens when I do just vertical. Oh, it finds the center and brings them together. We could then come here and select these two and do a join. I'll use the shortcut. That's Control J in Windows, Command J on a Mac. Just makes it a little bit easier. And voila, as they say. And again, we're still working simple, but we are making more complex shapes out of simple objects. That's how it's done.